At this point, it's a good idea to save our progress on the workbench file. We do this by left clicking on File, Save As, and going to an appropriate location to save the file. I will call it iBeam and click Save. Now, from here, I'm going to open up an internet browser and download the necessary files from Cornell Sim Cafe. Do this by clicking on this link under iBeam Geometry. And once that's downloaded, we click on the yellow icon to go back to ANSYS Workbench. And now we will upload the geometry. Do this by right clicking on Geometry, Import Geometry, Browse, and if you are using Internet Explorer or Chrome, it will be under your Downloads folder. Click on the ANSYS Design Modeler file, iBeam, and open. Now double click on Model. And this will bring us to ANSYS Mechanical. From here, we'll be able to assign the material properties to the iBeam and discuss the different parts of geometry that were just loaded. So if you maximize geometry, first thing you might notice is that we have two pieces of geometry. The first one being the I-beam itself, and the second being the surface body. Now, I'll explain it in further detail in the physics setup part of the tutorial, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we will just be applying the load to this surface body. Now, to prevent the solver from having errors applying a load to an extremely small surface, we want to give this a small thickness. We don't really want to add thickness to the geometry, but we just don't want errors in the solver. So, by clicking on surface body, and going to thickness, we're going to give it an arbitrarily small thickness of 1 times 10 to the negative third inches. 1e e, negative 3, enter. <coughs> and now we want to apply the material properties to the I-beam that we assigned in engineering data. We do this by clicking on assignment changing from structural steel to aluminum. Now we want to do the same for the surface body as well. From structural steel to aluminum. 